ahead and open up this time. Let's we'll start where we have been starting, I guess, in Second Corinthians chapter 13, the last verse. I'm going to expound a little bit on something that, that we taught this morning. How many, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me that one way that everybody, whether God uses you in the gifts or not, which I think God wants to use every person in the body of Christ in the gifts. I really believe that. And that's why Paul wrote to the whole church, covet earnestly the best gifts. He didn't write it just to the evangelist or just to the apostle. That letter is to the whole church, covet earnestly the best gifts. And I like what Oral Roberts said one time. He said, somebody asked him, said, well, which gift is the best? I liked his answer. He said, it's the one you need at the time. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> so, aside from the gifts, though, let's, one way that for sure every believer can co-labor with the Holy Spirit is by prayer. Doesn't that make sense to you? But it, how many of you know it? Uh, see, I'm not interested in prayer just for prayer's sake. When we, uh, James says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And he talks about Elijah. And you talk about prayer. If, if, a, if a human prays that it doesn't rain, and then it doesn't rain for three and a half years, yeah. now, the human can't do that. That is the, he's co-laboring with somebody else. Amen. See? And that's why James is encouraging us. He says, now listen, don't think your prayers won't have results. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. How many of you know you are the righteousness of God in Christ? See? So if Elijah, who was not born again, if it would work for him, how much more should that work for us? Okay? So we, in this season of teaching about co-laboring with the Holy Spirit, right now he's having me emphasize prayer. Boy, he's bringing out some things in a way I've just, I've never heard it exactly like this. And so here we are with our verse here, 2 Corinthians 13. And I'm not going to do the review that I did this morning because we don't have time. <laughs> so 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And again, that word communion is koinonia. It does mean fellowship. But the first meaning of it is participation. You could say partnership. It's where you have a part to play, and I have a part to play. And unless we both play our parts, it's not going to happen. Well, how many think Paul walked in that partnership? And it's not an accident that these three things are listed in this sequence. I didn't understand it at all. Praying in the Holy Ghost like Pastor Dave taught us. He began bringing it out to me. So, first off, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is he talking about? We're going to go over to Jude in a minute where Jude says, I, I need to exhort the church to contend for that faith, the faith that was once delivered to the church. Well, the faith is this. See, the law came by Moses. But grace, grace came by Jesus Christ. Remember that? Grace and truth. What grace is that? Why aren't you under the law anymore? Because God's grace put a new nature on the inside of you. And that grace, that, that new nature, has the power to walk above sin. See? Now, that is the truth. That is the faith that was once delivered that's the foundation of it that was first delivered to the early church. Jesus said it in John 8, 12. Those that follow me shall not walk in darkness. Why not? They shall have the light of life. And I'm finding out he was serious about that. Real serious about it. If you say you, John, was, John knew it 50 years later. He said, if you say you know him and you're walking in darkness... You're just a liar, that's all. You're not a follower of his. Because Jesus said, if you follow him, you won't walk in darkness. Hmm. I recommend the first John series to you. Boy, some of the testimonies we're getting. 
It's amazing. Okay. So number one, now we're talking, we're going to, we're talking really about answered prayer tonight. Paul says, first off, you need to know this grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and you need to have it with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end be with you. That means you need to be constantly aware of it. You need to walk in it. You know what will happen if you do that? You're going to stay in the love of God. Well, what does that mean? Doesn't God love everybody? Sure he does. He loves everybody that's in hell today. That's not the kind of love of God I'm after. I'm not interested in, I'm in hell forever with no hope of escape, but he loves me. Is that the kind you want? No, God, God gave us that new nature so that we can walk righteously the way that God intends for us to walk. And as we, as we allow, how does it, Nathan, as we yield to that Nathan, nature, to that Nathan, as we yield to that nature on the inside of us, it, that's how you stay within the bumper rails of your conscience. Your conscience is like the bumper rails. This is the path of righteousness. Walk ye in it. Walk that way. And if you... You're, that new nature is going to accuse or excuse every thought. You'll know yes, no, right, wrong. This is okay. This is not okay. And it, whenever you violate it, you're going to hit the bumper rail of your conscience. And that's when the conscience begins kicking in. And Paul, that word he used, said, I, I strive to exercise. I, that, that Greek word is like going to the gym, working out really hard. In other words, I work at keeping my conscience pure. I want it pure before men, and I want it pure before God. Well, me too. And this all has to do with answered prayer. I didn't know how much until recently. Some would say five minutes ago, but anyway. <laughs> well, I'm getting more on it. I'm getting more. But see, by having that grace of God with you and yielding to the new nature, that's how you stay in the love of God. It's not that he doesn't love everybody, but I want to stay in his love. I don't want to become like my youngest daughter, Amanda, who by her actions removed herself from where I could love on her. She wound up in jail. I couldn't, I couldn't hug her. I couldn't take her a gift. I couldn't do anything. They let me see her once a week, you know, for just like a little bit. But she, by her actions, removed herself from her daddy's love. It's not that I ever quit loving her, but I couldn't express it. She, did, she couldn't receive the benefits of it. You see what I'm saying? Well, that's what we do. God loved the prodigal. But the prodigal, by his actions, had removed himself from his father's house. He'd removed himself from the father's love. So that's why it's in this order. Listen, walk in that grace. You, you yield to that new nature. Be obedient to that grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that gave you a new nature so you can walk righteously. By doing that, you're going to keep yourself in the love of God. And then, as you're doing that, now you're a candidate for participation, co-laboring with the Holy Spirit. Now, he wrote this to the Corinthians who were already, if you'll allow me, co-laboring with the Holy Spirit by the gifts. But that's not really a co-laboring. That's just a gift. That, uh, the Holy Spirit was manifesting through them as he wills. It certainly wasn't them. Their part was tiny. <laughs> so Paul's writing to that bunch that was already operating in the gifts. And he's saying, there's a, there's a partnership that I'm praying for you. You're going to come to the place where you, you're going to walk by the power of that grace of the new nature. You're going to walk by that. You're going to keep yourselves in the love of God. You're going to learn how to co-labor with the Holy Ghost. Man, that's good stuff right there. Now, if you want to see a parallel to that, go over to the book of Jude. <clears throat> and uh, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you, <clears throat> excuse me, that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once. And that means this is the one that Jesus brought. This is the gospel that Jesus brought. Your faith is based on that, nothing else. You need to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now, in the context of today, we're talking the aspect of that faith, which is you have been made free from sin. 
Okay? You've been made free from sin. What Jesus, Jesus meant what he said and said what he meant. John 8, 12. Those that follow me shall not walk in darkness. Why? Because they're going to have the light of life. And that same chapter later on is where we have our verse, whom the Son makes free. It's free indeed. And he's talking about sin, isn't he? Yes, he is. Thank you very much. You did good. All right. <clears throat> For there are certain men crept in unawares, meaning they say they're Christians. They use the name of Jesus. They say they're preaching the true gospel. They, otherwise, they couldn't come in unawares, could they? They say they're on television in Tulsa right today, preaching the same heresy that was being preached then. But what are they doing? They're ungodly men, no matter what they say. See, they say they're Christian, but Jude says they're ungodly. What are they doing? They're turning the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me. They're turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. They're denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, they cannot be denied. If they came in and said, Jesus Christ is not Lord, how many Christians are going to listen to that? That's not what they're saying. No, what they are saying, they are denying his teachings. They're denying John 8, 12. They're saying God's grace covers lasciviousness. They're saying you can continue to walk in darkness, and God's, God's okay with it. God's grace will cover it. Not that he's okay with it, but God's grace will cover it. You'll be okay, little Christian. Just keep on fornicating. Just keep on. Keep on stealing. Keep on lying. I heard a preacher yesterday say, if you're lying, you'll be frying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you lie, you fry. Okay. <laughs> Can you see what the, it's the it's that radical grace already started in the first century. And it's coming against the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Well, what is that faith? Those that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And these guys are coming in destroying that. They're saying, no, no, you can continue, you can continue in fornication and getting drunk and and all of that stuff. You'll be okay. No, you will not be okay. These guys started out as Christians. And how you know that? How you know it for sure? In my Bible, turn over one page. <laughs> Go to verse 12. Talking about these same guys. Said, these are spots in your feasts of charity, your love feasts. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear... Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Now right here, here's how you know at one time these guys were Christians. True trees whose fruit withereth. Now stop for a moment. You can't have fruit that withers unless there's first fruit. These guys had fruit at one time. They started out okay. I mentioned Jim Jones this morning. Norval used to preach in his church. and he, Jim Jones used to preach at Norval services. And they knew each other. And Norval says plainly. And I heard him say this, of course, years after Guyana. He says, I know that Jim started off right, man. He was on fire for God. He loved God, man. And, and he said he was clean when I knew him. He wasn't involved in anything. And he says, I don't know. He moved to the West Coast, and we kind of lost track. And and I don't know what all happened, but see, they've got, a, they've got a special going on right now where his sons are telling what a lot of things that we didn't know before. I don't know when it happened, but he got hooked on drugs. And they said even the very week that that massacre happened down there, he was high nearly all the time on something. He was addicted to drugs. Well, there's that flesh handle again, see. I wonder how it started. I bet it didn't start out that way. Probably started, well, I better not say that. But probably started out small. I have a sister who has been in the grave a long time. Very lovely girl. She was the A student. I was the C student. She was the good girl. I was kind of the bad boy in our family. But she just got hooked up with the wrong crowd. We didn't know much back in those days about drugs and, you know, experimenting around with it. And one preacher says, don't, don't be messing around that slippery creek bank. Dave would say, don't play with that baby snake. It won't stay small. 
And that's what happened with her. And, and it wound up taking her life. Wound up taking her life, see. Well, Jim Jones not only took his, he took, what, 300 and some odd with him. And a lot of them children. God. That's the devil incarnate right there. Not Jim, but the, the spirit that was, the spirits that were behind that thing. So here, in, but look at, they, and Jim started out okay. That's why I mentioned Jim Jones. Those that knew him. Norval says, I knew him. I'm telling you, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Paul mentioned that in his letter to the, very, to the Corinthians. He says, I keep my body under. Why? Lest after I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And the real Greek word there is the same word translated reprobate in Romans chapter 1. It doesn't matter so much how you start. It matters, it matters how you finish. Those that endure to the end shall be saved. So these guys, like Jim Jones... They had to have fruit or the fruit couldn't wither. Trees whose fruit withereth. Well, that's first. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. They had fruit. Then you see the fruit wither. It gets ugly looking. It's shrivelly, shriveledy, <laughs> shriveled up. But then the next stage, well, then it's just without fruit. No fruit at all now. Then it becomes twice dead. How do, you, how, does, how do you become twice dead as a human? Every human is born spiritually dead. You have to get alive in Christ. But then with the light goes completely out, you become twice dead. And if that's not bad enough, plucked up by the roots. Dave calls that, that's the reprobate. It's not that God wouldn't take you back. There's nothing in you that wants to come back. Man, there's not even a root looking. Roots search for water. Don't they underground? Aren't, isn't that what a root is? You can have a root break a sidewalk. Why? It's, it's hunting for water. Hunting for life. He said that these guys, they don't even have roots anymore. I mean, it is the picture. But it, you see the process? They fruit bearing, To go from a fruit-bearing tree to something that doesn't even have a root. Don't mess around with sin now. We want to keep ourselves in the love of God. Well, what's the answer, Jude? How, how would I do that? How would I keep myself in the love of God? And thank God for Pastor Dave. Come on, you know, you know where I'm going. <clears throat> thank God for Pastor Dave for teaching us these verses. But you, beloved, verse 20, you, beloved. In other words, I don't want to see what happened to them happen to you. You've got fruit right now. You're doing good right now. And I want you to continue to contend for that faith that was once delivered to the saints. I don't want you to wind up like them. No fruit and withered. I don't want that. Well, what's your suggestion, Jude? What should I do to keep from becoming like that? But you, beloved. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Dave. Building up yourselves. On your most holy faith. Now that's the very faith. That's the same faith he's talking about. That faith that was once delivered to the saints. You spend time with the Holy Spirit. He is going to keep reminding you of who you are. He is going to witness with you that you are a child of God. He's going to keep telling you that you are free from sin. That you don't walk in darkness. You're a child of light. It's not that he teaches you that. The new nature teaches you that. But your new nature in fellowship with him who spawned that new nature, he's going to keep you strong. You say that? You see what I'm saying there? He's going to keep reminding you. He's going to bear witness that you are a child of God. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Glory to God. So keep your own. Oh, yeah. You, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But now notice... Keep yourselves in the love of God. The Holy Spirit, he, that fellowship with him, between him and your spirit, you're walking with him. You, man, if you're really walking with him, stuff's going to be happening. Your life is going to be exciting. Your life is going to involve whatever it is he's called you to do. You're going to be busy doing that, not out in the world looking for sin. You see that? He's going to keep you within the bumper rails. He's going to keep you busy. Whatever calling he's called you to do, you and him are about your father's business, co-laboring in the kingdom. You ain't got time to be out looking after sin. 
It's going to keep you in the love of God. Stay within the bumper rails of that righteous path. Glory to God. Now, go to 1 John. I'm trying to teach and not preach. Get excited. Just so you'll know there that's watching, this is, this is why I, this excitement is what keeps me so young and good looking. <clears throat> oh, anyway. <laughs> 1 John chapter 3, because today now we were, we were taking all that into account and looking at answered prayer. Because prayer, and yes, we talked about praying in the Holy Ghost this morning, but then we ended up, when you do know what to pray for as you ought, we went through quite a list, the Lord's Prayer, uh, praying for your own bread, praying for bread for others, pray for the leaders of the country. See, I want my, when I spend time doing that, I want participation by the Holy Spirit. I want God to hear and I want God to answer. Isn't that why we pray? Well, until I went through the first John, until I went, till we went, we together went through the first John series, this verse had never meant much to me. And it's first John chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. It says, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, what if I said it this way? If my conscience is pure. Isn't that another way of saying the same thing? My, in other words, if, our, if my heart's not condemning me, then that means my conscience is clean. Okay? So in that condition, beloved, when my conscience is clean and my heart is not condemning me, then have we confidence toward God. What do you mean confidence? What are you talking about? Well, I mean in prayer. Because he says, and whatsoever we ask, is that prayer? Yeah. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we prayed in the name of Jesus. I didn't get any amens, thank God. See, but that's what we've been taught. That's what we've been taught. Look at what he says. Do you reckon this old grizzled apostle, <laughs> John at this point, let's see, if it's been 50 years and he was 20-ish, so he's got to be my age or older. When he wrote this, after a lifetime of serving Jesus, he says, you want your prayers answered? Yes, John, we want our prayers answered. Keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. What? I'm, most of the church world is going to accuse me of preaching works because I'm preaching what John preached. Most of the church world said, well, that's got nothing to do with faith. No, 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 Brother Gary. No, no, no. It's in, in the, I can hear it, the name. <laughs> that toad anointing, it's in, it's in the, the name. Don't you know, Brother Gary? Hmm. Well, it is in the name. But his name is not like open sesame. Name of Jesus, answer my prayer. It's not like a lucky, lucky rabbit's foot you carry in your pocket. No. In his name means... You are surrendered. You are his ambassador. You have been bought with a price. You're not on this earth to accomplish your will. You're on this earth to accomplish his will. You are an ambassador here, no less. And we send American U.S. ambassadors to other countries. They're not there to accomplish their will. They are there to accomplish the will of the United States of America. That's exactly when you pray in the name of Jesus. That's what it means. It's not for you to establish your kingdom either. It's for you to accomplish your part in his kingdom. I used the example this morning, which I wasn't going to do it, and he made me do it. Well, he didn't make me. <laughs> but he was serious about it. We went to where John, where he told John, you're going to be a martyr for me. Now, isn't that news? <laughs> Most people don't know that. Most people don't know how they're going to die. John found out two things. You're going to live to be an old guy. Did I say, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Peter learned a few things. You don't have to take all that. Peter learned a few things that day that he didn't know. He learned he's going to live to be an old guy. You know, that's why he was asleep when he was in prison just a little shortly, a short while after this. Remember, they were going to, they were going to kill Peter because they'd already killed James. Peter, he wasn't worried. He went to sleep. Well, it's only been a short time since Jesus told me I'm going to live to be an old man. I'm not an old man. I ain't going to die. Yeah, I'm going to go to sleep. You wasn't worried. 
Jesus already told him, you're going to live to be an old man. Angel had to thump him on the side to wake him up. <laughs> now that's peace. You're going to, I can just hear the devil. What's wrong with this, Peter? We keep telling him, you're going to die in the morning. You're going to die. <laughs> you're doomed. You're going to die. We have you now. They killed James. They're going to kill you. And he goes, oh, I think I'm going to take a nap. Peace of God. Why? He had knowledge. The Lord had already told him, you're not going to die as a young man. Okay. But he also found out, you're going to die <laughs> as a martyr for me. And I love Peter's truthfulness. I'm going to die as a martyr. What about John? <laughs> Isn't that exactly how we'd read? <laughs> what about Jason over there? What about him? <laughs> oh, and such a truth here, though. Such a truth. Because Jesus says, if I will. Now, whose will is it about? Is it about Peter's will? Is it about John's will? He said, if I will. Boy, there's only one king of this kingdom. There's only one Lord of this house. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. If I will that John stays until I return. Peter, what's that to you? And then to each one, I'm looking in the camera for a reason. Here's what Jesus says. You follow me. You follow me. See, it dawned on my lightning quick mind one day that the Holy Spirit, every time Peter prayed in other tongues, was working Peter's path towards the day where he would wind up being a martyr for Jesus. All things work together for good. So, well, I don't see how that could be for good. The blood of the martyr is the seed of the gospel. Isn't that the truth? Glory to God. So much... First mm. John chapter 3 again verses 21 and 22 but verse 22 whatever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and I'm going to say it a little different than I did this morning Gary you mean to tell me what are you doing Gary you preaching a works gospel now are you telling me that my prayers can be hindered by my lifestyle? My answer is, can you read? Can you read? Didn't he just say, look what he says right there. This is where your confidence is. If your heart's not condemning you and your conscience is pure, then you can have confidence that when you pray, he's going to, whatever you ask, you're going to receive it from him because you're keeping his commandments and doing those things that are pleasing in his sight. Yeah, I'm telling you that. It makes a difference. Are you his or are you still yours? You live, you're walking by the spirit, you're still walking by the flesh. Who's got you? I say it again because I hear it again. Yielding to that new nature in you is no less than yielding to Christ in you. That new man on the inside of you, born of him, that is Christ in you. And to rebel against it is to rebel against him. Thank God he's long-suffering and merciful. How many of you got, I'm glad he's not just the God of the second chance. Seventy times seven, I want to say a day. <laughs> I'm not sure you can do that, but anyway, his mercies are new how many mornings? Oh, thank you. I can't wait till the sun comes up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Now, again, you know what I love about, well, I love a lot of things about John. The thing that opened up the book of John to me was when in verse 3, I believe it is, of 1 John, he says, I'm just telling those things which I have seen and heard. You know what 1 John really is? It's show and tell. <laughs> I'm telling the things that I have seen and heard of him. So he's saying right here now, listen, if you want your prayers answered, keep his commandments. Today we would say, it, I would say it like this, obey the voice of your new nature. By that process, you don't be hitting the bumper rails and your conscience is clean. Then when it says, do those things that are pleasing in his sight, 
To me, that sounds like seek ye first the kingdom of God. Find out your place in it and be about your business doing what he called you to do, whatever that is. Isn't that right? So if you're doing that, he says, well, whatever you ask, if you're in his service, you're doing what he told you to do, you're living righteous, keeping clear of the bumper rails of your conscience, whatever you ask, you receive of him. And what I really love about John, he said, I'm just teaching what Jesus taught. You want to see where Jesus taught it? For a love offering. No, okay. I got to quit doing that. Go over to John chapter 15. Big John. Big good John. <laughs> Big good John. <clears throat> he's just teaching what he heard Jesus teach. He's not, he's not adding to what Jesus taught. He's not taking away from it. He is teaching precisely what Jesus taught. And here it is. John 15. Look at verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, isn't that exactly what John wrote over there 50 years later? When it says, My words abide in you, what that means is that you not only heard them, you're a doer of them. Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? To just be a hearer of the word does not make you a disciple. That's not going to put your house on a rock. No, he said, those that hear only and don't do, they're like, they're building their house on sand. Can I say it this way? They're pretend Christians. They're pretend Christians. They're Christian in name only. But he says, of that guy that hears my word and does them? Well, he's like the guy that built his house on a rock. And it does not matter what hell throws at you. Doesn't matter what say. If, there, if anybody ever had the kitchen sink and the kitchen thrown at them, it was the Apostle Paul. I mean, you know, we get a bad Facebook report and we're all devastated, you know. <laughs> Shipwrecks, poisonous snakes biting you on the hand. Stoned, beaten with rods, <laughs> perils of thieves, perils of robbers, perils of my own countrymen, on and on and on. Everything you can imagine that can be put in prison. <laughs> I, like, I like it again. They had a, Rome had a problem with Peter and Paul. They couldn't keep the guards guarding them because Peter and Paul would get them saved. <laughs> God, I love that. You talk, about, that's, you talk about obeying Christ. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those that dis love them. Pray for them. Do good to them. They did exactly that. And then they kept getting their guards saved. <laughs> I would need another guard. Guards in there praying with Peter. Right? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> it tickles me. <laughs> See, verse 7 again. John's just preaching. What, what he heard Jesus say all those years before. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. I'm just going to say it plain. When he says your, his words abide in you. He's talking to doers of the word. Not just hearers. If my words abide in you. In other words. If you are keeping my commandments. And doing those things that are pleasing. In the Lord's sight. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Now get this. We're supposed to stay in the Father's love. You remember that second part of what Paul prayed for the Corinthian church? Jude says also keep yourselves in the love of God. Keeping yourselves in the love of God. Well how do you keep yourselves in the love of God? Jesus taught it right here. Verse 9. As the Father hath loved me. So have I loved you. Now get this. Continue you in my love. Well, how would I do that? If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. We're right back. We're full circle. Right back around to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that empowers you to walk above sin. He did it for us. 
You talk about grace. Nobody could earn that. Nobody worked for that. Nobody deserved that. Nobody gave enough to have that. It is free. That's what Jesus, when he, he did all of the work to make that available to us free by grace. But boy, just because it's free, don't think it's not powerful. I'm telling you, the more I'm in this, the more I understand Jesus is serious as a box of rocks about his people walking free from sin. He didn't pay a price like he paid for us to go wallow in the trough with the world. He didn't pay a, and that more and more, some things that I used to even preach in the early, early days. I'm glad, anyway. You know, I, I've said it out of my mouth. Oh, when, you know, when you mess up, he only sees Jesus when he looks at you. That's hogwash. That's not the truth. Did the father only see Jesus when he saw the prodigal out there? No. The prodigal was prodigalizing. I still like that word. He was out there prodigalizing, doing, and he had removed himself by those actions. He couldn't do that and stay in the father's house. The father loved him. I know he loved him because it says once the kid, young man, re repented and started on his way home. Oh, I, the verse, it just makes me cry. It says the father saw him a long way off. Tells me that boy was always on his heart. He loved him even while he was in the big trough, even while he was with the harlots, even while he was doing what he was doing. God loved him, but by his actions, he had removed himself from his father's love. Say it another way. He had removed himself from his father's house. Remember what the father said about him? This, my son, was not wounded, not sick. This, my son, was dead. Dead in trespasses and sins, and weren't we all? But boy, when you repent and come to your father's house, the next thing he says, this my son was dead and is alive again. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Thank God for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God walking in the grace he provided for us keeps us in the love of God. And as we do that, we can co-labor with the Holy Spirit. And when we pray, because we're keeping the commandments and doing those things that are pleasing in his sight, we can know that when we pray, we receive of him the answer every time. Then we, we start lining up the St. Jude children. Then we start lining up the children's hospital over here. Then we start filling the... I'm looking for the day we have crutches and canes and hearing aids and, and wheelchairs and stretchers and everything plastered around these walls or the walls of a newer church. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the angels that are holding this one together. <laughs> Aren't you looking forward to that day? This is exactly what he's after. Verse 80 says, herein is my father. You know what? When that happens, it's not for your glory. He says, herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Well, boy, did he bear fruit? Hello. Did Jesus bear fruit? My Lord. And he says, you're going to bear fruit just like I did. And it's going to glorify the father. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, the more I'm into this, the more I, I'm, I feel like now Angie and I go to the gym about three times a week, whether we like it or not. I thank God that she goes because if she didn't go, I don't know how often I'd go. <laughs> a buddy is, it helps. A buddy system helps, okay? But I'm telling you now, I'm wanting to do some other gymnastics. Paul says, I, I think I have that verse on here. Go to verse, uh, Acts 24, 16. We'll finish up here. Acts 24, 16. This title will be Keeping Yourself in the Love of God, Angie. Keeping Yourself in the Love of God. Acts 24, 16. If I can ever get there. Oh, I've got it on the page. <laughs> and herein do I, notice this word, exercise myself. I didn't look that Greek word up, but I know what exercise means. <laughs> Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Angie and I, and I've got to tell you, my flesh, Sunday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night. 
It does not want to go the next day. It's already, it's already telling me before I go to bed. <laughs> Think of some kind of excuse to get out of this. But I get up and I go anyway. Right. And Angie gets up and goes anyway. She's told me it helps both of us get our behinds out of bed. <laughs> I exercise myself. Why use that word? In other words, it's not easy. If I just going to do what comes easy, I'd stay in bed. I got to get up. I got to do it on purpose. And Paul is using that same word to always have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Now, let's take it one step further. You're the, you're the diehards of the diehards. You're the calling in the lost. You know what they really mean? Okay. Where we're going? If you're going to keep a clear conscience toward God, that means when he gives you an personally an instruction I'll use Gary maybe I've got 10 I'll, I'll use the same one I, I had $10 in my pocket at the time we were sitting right over there and he said to me give that lady right in front of us give her $10 I wasn't even sure I had $10 I was kind of hoping I didn't have $10 <laughs> looked at my wallet guess what was in there $10 said that isn't much it is if it's all you got <laughs> <laughs> bear witness right <laughs> now if I'd have refused is my conscience just going to ignore that that didn't happen he didn't say that to me <laughs> is that going to fly no you know you know when he gives you an instruction and Paul says I have to work at it I have to exercise on purpose, sometimes when my soul may not want to do it, I don't want to cause offense. I want my conscience clean. So no matter what he tells me to do, I'm thinking about the time they stoned him at Lystra, left him for dead. Those people in those days knew what stoning was. And if they leave you for dead, might have been dead. You know, the others circled around him and prayed, and he came. I don't know whether he was dead or not, but it was bad. Can you imagine what he looked like? I can't imagine those stones hitting you in the face. And what does he do? He gets up and says, we're going back into Lister. Why? God wasn't finished yet. Doesn't matter what they did. I'm going back in there anyway. I'm exercising myself. I'm not going to have an offense toward God. I'm going to work at keeping my conscience pure. Boy, let's do that. We're in the... This season that we're in now, just do it on purpose, on practice. Listen for that whisper. Listen for that instruction. Listen for that prompting. And then do it whether you want to or not. Exercise yourself. Do it whether you want to. <laughs> I'll finish with this. In the early, early days, and I'm over at the ugly building, and I'm praying. I'm trying to hear the voice of God. The whole purpose of me being there so I can hear the voice of God and do what he wants. And I'm praying. And I mean, this, it took a long time. I'm praying for days and weeks and months. And I remember one day I was over there just praying away. I don't know how many hours. Praying away. And I heard his voice. I mean, what I've been over there praying happened. And he told me to go give a certain person a certain amount of money. And I said, soon as I finish praying. <laughs> and it was like, oh, you mean now? <laughs> oh, that's why I'm here to hear you. Oh. I started getting a clue. Prayer was not for prayer's sake. Prayer has a purpose. When you hear his voice, obey the voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, what I'm saying is in this season, when you get those nudgings, those promptings, whatever it is, exercise yourself to keep a pure conscience. It's more important to keep that conscience pure than anything that you might, you know, he might have you give or do in the natural. Y'all getting anything? You understand? Say yes whether you do or not. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. That's, a, that's it for tonight. I'm, but I am excited about this. And every People are going to, again, they're going to accuse me. No matter that I read it out of 1 John, no matter that I read it out of John 15, they're going to say, Gary, no, nope. your teaching works now. Your teaching, I've got to clean my life up if I want answered prayer. No, I did not teach that. Jesus taught that. And then John repeated what Jesus taught. Don't think, don't think it doesn't matter. And I'm beginning to understand why the church at large has, at large has so little answered prayer. 
I'm telling you, I'm excited about these things. These things get me going because it lets me know we're headed for revival. I mean, he's pulling out all the stops, ripping up the veils, the things that we don't understand, and he's getting us ready to go in and take the land. How, boy, this land needs taken, too, for the kingdom of God. All right, that's it. We've got, got to stop. So we're going to go ahead and do the confessions now. And uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if you can't stay for the confessions, there's not a problem with that. I understand that. That's good. Say with me. By the way, right before I come down here, just... <laughs> See, I'm the grandpa. Am I, am I supposed to lead the way for my granddaughter? The last thing I did before I come down here, me and Lily sitting in the chair, we went through the first John confessions. There's two pages of them, you know. And I'd say a line and she'd say a line. And I'd say a line and she'd say a line. Train up a child in the way they should go. Don't tell me that seed won't, won't bring a harvest. It will, too. Father, I worship you. I glorify you. I praise you. You're not a man that you could lie. You have exalted your word above your name. Heaven and earth will pass away. But your word will never pass away. Therefore I say, your glory is present at the prayer center. The blind see. Now listen, we're going to have everything that we're saying. I'm telling you, we will have what we say. You hear me? There was, let's do it again. Therefore I say, your glory is present at the prayer center. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised, and the poor, they have the gospel preached to them. A minimum of a thousand people are born again at the prayer center every week. We have a minimum of 500 intercessors who are holding up the message that has come to maturity. We are able to get along with each other while the Father works revival in our midst. We have that kind of worship that takes us beyond the veil of the flesh in order that we may worship in spirit and in truth. We worship you, Father, out of our new nature. And we give you family worship as your sons and daughters. Father, at the prayer center, those that come will see a people transformed to the nature of Christ. Father, we say, in the name of Jesus, no person ever leaves the prayer center the same way they came. Every person that comes receives a touch from the Good Shepherd. Father, those that come who are beaten down, discouraged, worn out, and tired, they won't leave that way. They'll be encouraged, strong, and mature. They'll leave standing upright, their shoulders squared, their heads held high, going forth as a mighty army to take this planet for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Father, your glory fills every service. Every person that comes drinks of your glory. They'll leave his earthen vessels filled with your glory, filled with your wisdom, filled with your love, filled with your grace, and anointed by your spirit. They'll carry your presence with them, and they'll carry a revival around this world. Father, we declare, we preach your gospel. We'll never settle for man's gospel. Only yours. It's the gospel that saves, the gospel that fills, 
and the gospel that heals. That's why we say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Blind, see. Lame, walk. Deaf, hear. Maimed, be whole. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's your gospel. We'll settle for nothing less. We're going for the gold. We have what we say. And we say at every service, the lost are saved. People are filled with the Holy Ghost. The blind see. The lame walk. The deaf hear. The maimed are made whole. And the dead are raised. In the name of Jesus. I'll make y'all a little confession. I'm going through again reading Dave's book. I try and do that at least once a year. It's been a little while. I only have one problem. I think I'm through chapter 4 or 5 maybe. And I have trouble going on because it makes me want to go pray in tongues instead. <laughs> Man, that book. Man. What a, it's a masterpiece, you know. Just saying, if you, you, uh, that might stir you up on your most holy faith also. <laughs> Read that book, man. I go, God. Anyway, I'm going I'm to finish the book. More than 12 legions of angels are loosed to prepare the way for revival. Angels are dispatched to the four corners of the earth, intercepting and stopping every mission and every assignment of the enemy that would bring circumstances against those who would come. Angels are changing those circumstances by rearranging them, causing money to come, and by changing schedules. We say, every person that is to be here will be here in the name of Jesus. There is no devil big enough. No assignment crafty enough. No circumstances bad enough that will keep even one from being here. Father, we declare your house full. Angels are moving back the forces of darkness over this region. They're opening up a window, a window of light, 25 miles in every direction, both horizontally and vertically. There is a fortress of angels surrounding us to keep back the darkness. Father, angels are dispatched now, softening the hearts where hurts have wounded, where calluses have formed, where walls of defenses have gone up. <clears throat> angels are softening the hearts <clears throat> and creating atmospheres where the people can hear the voice of their shepherd. Angels are preparing their hearts now. So they're already receivers when they arrive. From the first word spoken, from the first song sung, from the first prayer prayed, to the end of every service, the people are free to receive from your spirit. The assignments of all devils against the prayer center, the people of the prayer center, and the leadership of the prayer center, all those assignments are dismissed in the name of Jesus. I declare those plans null and void. Devil, we're taking Tulsa from you. In fact, we already have. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Not you. We're an authority here. Not you. Devil, 
Get out of Tulsa. Take all your demons with you. The king of kings has made a decree. And I am speaking in his stead. The king has declared. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. The king has decreed. Captives. You are free. Every person returns to his original inheritance. That is the born again trail. Father, you have restored our inheritance. And at the prayer center, the inheritance is not just known about. We don't just teach about it. But it's received, manifested, and seen. Father, you have restored our fellowship with you. Let's do it a little different. Father, you have restored our partnership with you. The firstborn told us to pray. Father, your will be done on earth. Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven. So in earth. As in heaven. So in Tulsa. There are no lost people in heaven. Therefore we say. Tulsa is saved. There are no sick people in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is healed. There are no demoniacs in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is delivered. And there's no poor people in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is prospered. And Tulsa is blessed. We declare every captive free. Every wheelchair emptied. All of them. No exceptions. Every artificial help. Wheelchairs. Crutches. Canes. Hearing aids. Glasses. Stretchers. Bladder bottles. They may need them when they come. They won't need them when they leave. And we'll have them here as trophies. To the glory of Jesus the healer. All manner of sickness. And all manner of diseases. Are healed. First time. Every time. All of them. No exceptions. Jesus you healed them all then. You healed them all now. We believe you Lord. We believe you Lord. We believe you, Lord. You found a people that believe you, Lord. That's what we say. That's what we have in the name of Jesus. Father, there are impartations of your spirit. We declare these are the most powerful, the most anointed, the most life-changing, the most revival producing services in history. Fresh anointings, fresh giftings, like never before since the book of Acts. Father, it's you doing the works. Therefore, all things are possible. So, my own soul, I command you, believe this. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. And every backslider will come back to God. They will never leave God again. So now, Father, in preparation. Oh, I forgive every person their trespasses against me. Father, we pray for the leaders of our country right now. Father, all of those even that, that vote for abortion and are on that side. Father, you said for, pray for the leaders. Pray for our enemies. Pray for those that are hurting us. Father, I don't know how to pray other than just obey you. Father, we pray for our president. 
We pray for our congressmen, our senators. We pray for the cabinet. We pray for everybody in authority, Father. Father, we ask forgiveness for what they're doing, even though they're violating your word, Father. Father, with all we know how, we forgive them and we pray, Father, that your kingdom come and your will be done in their lives. Father, give us righteous people to govern this country that hear your voice and obey you, Lord. Mm. I pray for them, Father, that each and every one of them, each and every one of them comes to know you as their personal Savior, Lord. That they all know you from the least to the greatest, all of them. That righteousness reign in this country again. So, Father, we're doing our best to forgive every person their trespasses against us. Now you can say with me, Father, forgive me all of my trespasses against you. I am freshly washed in the blood of the Lamb. In order that my record in heaven be perfect. Therefore I say. Because of the blood. What Jesus did for me. According to my record in heaven. I have never failed God. I lay down my life. That the life of Christ may be manifest in me. I take no offense. I give no offense, and according to my record in heaven, I never have. At the prayer center, the mind of Christ is delivered to both the sheep and the shepherds. It's delivered with such simplicity and with such clarity that the wayfaring fool could not misunderstand it. Therefore I say, the people at the prayer center, and especially me, we all understand every word that Pastor Dave teaches, and we declare that Pastor Dave teaches. Every need is met, no matter how large, no matter how small, there are no cases too hard. There are no cases too late. And whatever they come for to receive from Jesus, they get it. All of them, first time, every time, no exceptions. I declare every captive free. Free in spirit, free in soul, free in body. All are delivered. All are restored. Father, you are provider. Angels are dispatched to gather in all of the finances and everything that is required. Things we know about now, things we don't even know about yet, because you are the God who answers before we call. I speak against the strongholds of lack. And I declare an abundance. Abundance. Be in the name of Jesus. Therefore we say, there is no lack. We operate from abundance. We operate from surplus. We have all and abound with many baskets left over. We have such abundance. We can pay the way for many to come and many to go. And we send them out on prosperous journeys for God with abundance in a manner fitting for servants of the Lord. Our financial granaries are full because our king has found stewards he can trust. And I'm one of them. Father, if you need anything, come to my house first. Whatever you have need of, come to my house first. All I need to know is my Lord has need of it. And it's yours. I've been bought with a price. My life is not my own. I am a first class servant. Lord, I lay all my possessions at your feet. And I say again, Lord, 
if you need anything I have, it's yours. I love you, Lord, with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength. And the second commandment is like unto the first. I love my neighbor as you have loved me. I love my good neighbors. I love my bad neighbors. I love my mean neighbors. And I love my enemies. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. Whatever you ask, that's what I do. I am your servant. And I am your bond slave. By my own free will choice. I serve you, Lord, by serving these people that you love so much. I serve the good people. I serve the bad people. I serve the mean people. And I especially serve your enemies. Because you're trying to save them all. You'd like to use me to do it. All that I have is yours. My time is yours. My body is yours. My family is yours. I own nothing. I am your bond slave. Use me as you will. You are provider for me, my family, and all that I have. And I am available for your use. We lift up the blood-stained banner over this city. Written in the blood of Jesus on the banner are these words. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Tulsa is in revival. Tulsa is in revival. And where Jesus is Lord, the Father's will is done. Father, have your way. Not just 30-fold, not just 60-fold, but 100-fold. Again, I say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Captives, go free. Blind, see. Deaf, hear. Lame, walk. Maimed, be whole. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. Forever, your will be done in Tulsa. Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven, so in earth. As in heaven, so in Tulsa. Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We have what we say in the name of Jesus. We have what we say. It'll be exactly as we have spoken in Jesus' name. Now extend your faith and maybe your hand this way. Father, every picture here represents an impossible case according to the world. But there is no such thing as impossible with you. Father, we're not praying again for these because we know that you heard us the first time. Father, Jesus told us that when we pray, we're to believe that we receive when we pray. And that's exactly what we've done. And it says if we do that, we shall have it. Well, Father, we're thanking you right now for the manifestation of the miracle in every one of these cases. Father, we shall see them in the land of the living. We'll see the answers to these prayers. Father, for the prayers inside of this box, and I know they, they change every day. New ones come in every day. Father, your word does tell us that if we ask anything that's according to your will, we know that you hear us. Lord, if you hear us, then we have the petitions that we desire of you. So, Father, we're just joining our faith together with these, and we're thanking you for answering every single prayer that Jesus paid the price for them to have. And, Father, if a stranger sent a prayer request here, someone who's not yet born again, not yet in the family, not yet in the kingdom, 
But Lord, and, and really it doesn't matter, Lord, if they're Hindu, Muslim, B Buddhist, atheist, agnostic. If they had enough faith to send a prayer request here, and if that request is in line with your will, Father, we ask like Solomon asked, answer the prayer of the stranger. Father, do it in such a unique and unusual way. They'll have to know it was you that answered that prayer. So they can know, like we already know, that you're the only true and living God. And they can hear the gospel of your son and be saved. Father, we pray for every prayer cloth that goes forward from this place. Lord, you have not changed one bit. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we expect the same results. When those cloths are laid on the sick, they will recover. When they're laid on people that have devils, those devils will come out. Father, that means alcoholics will be delivered. Drug addicts will be delivered. Bipolar and mental disease of all kind will be dismissed. And they'll be set in their right mind. Rebellious children will return to their parents. You'll turn the hearts of the parents to the children. And even marriages will be put back together. Because you're the same God today that you were then. And you do the same things today, Father. Father, it was so good to see Pastor Dave here this morning. We lift up Pastor Dave and Rosalie and all of their house. We lift up Tim and Leah Stemple and all of their house. Father, I know if Alan Taylor's family is not back yet, they're in the process of returning from Brazil. We thank you, Lord, for a safe arrival, eager to hear about the fruit for your kingdom that came. Father, but we lift up all of the ministers and their families, not only here at this facility, but all of those that have joined with us around the world. Father, the staff, the congregations, the volunteers, and we declare no weapon. Father, yes, sir, specifically, I lift up Daisy Black to you. Father, we thank you. Daisy's here as much as if she's sitting in that chair. And Father, we just thank you for ministering great fruit for Daisy Black. In Jesus' name. No weapon formed against any of them will prosper, but everything they set their hand to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, last but not least, Lord, it is Thanksgiving week, and there's going to be a lot to do, lots of business, especially for the women. But, Father, still, even in our busyness, we have our ear open to you, Father. Father, if you need us, you speak and we'll obey right in the middle. Obeying you is more important than anything else. We want to be good stewards of this life that you gave us, Lord. Someday we'll stand before you and give an accounting of how we stewarded the life you gave us. We sure want to have that same testimony as Paul. We kept the faith. We fought the good fight. And we finished the race that you set in front of us. Father, here at the prayer center, we know what that race is. And it is revival. Father, you will have your revival. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Well, we've got a few more minutes. Let's go ahead and speak over our beloved pastor. How many are looking forward to seeing Dave Roberson 2.0? The new and improved. Better than ever. More anointed than ever. Teaching better than ever. Dave Roberson. I miss our pastor. So just repeat after me. And by the way, if you have not heard these, all of these are either directly from words that Dave has received himself or the scripture that, uh, that, I know, that we know for a fact are ones that he really loves. He loves them all, but you know what I mean. So Dave blesses the Lord with all of his soul and with all that is within him. He blesses the Lord and forgets not all his benefits. The Lord forgives all of Dave's iniquities, and the Lord heals all of his diseases. Dave's life is redeemed from destruction, and he is crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. Dave is satisfied with good things, and his youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord has lit Dave's candle and enlightened his darkness. The Lord causes him to run through a troop and leap over a wall. The Lord girds Dave with strength 
and makes his way perfect. The Lord makes him able to stand firmly and make progress on the dangerous heights of testing and trials. The Lord sets Dave firmly upon the high places. The Lord teaches Dave's hands to war. The Lord is his shield of salvation. The Lord's right hand holds Dave up. His gentleness has made Dave great. And the Lord causes Dave's feet to not slip. Dave pursues his spiritual enemies and overtakes them. He does not stop until his enemies are consumed. Dave's enemies are wounded and not able to rise. They have fallen under his feet. The Lord has girded Dave with strength for the battle. The Lord has subdued those that rose up against Dave. <clears throat> Great deliverance has the Lord given to Dave. And the Lord shows great mercy to his anointed, Dave Roberson. Lord, we sing praises unto your name. Dave has, Dave has a sound mind, full of love and power. Free from fear and torment. Dave is in constant fellowship with the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit. Who teaches him all truth. And shows him things to come. Dave has the mind of Christ. And he has access to all wisdom. Dave accurately discerns all things. The Holy Spirit brings to his remembrance all things which the Lord has spoken unto him. Dave is a steward of the mysteries of God. And he remembers every revelation he has ever received. Dave has been given the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of Dave's understanding have been enlightened to know the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Dave comprehends the exceeding greatness of his power. His power to usward who believe. It's according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Dave understands that he is quickened, raised, and seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. Therefore, Dave is seated far above all principality and power, far above all might and dominion, and far above every name that is named. Dave has been a given a Dave has been given authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt Dave. The Lord himself causes Dave's mind to articulate and to hear clearly all the days of his life. The Lord himself causes Dave's health to be in place and for his clothes and provision to always be more than sufficient for every need. Dave takes authority over his mind and speaks to his soul every day saying, I command you to be sound and healthy. You are not permitted to lose memories. 
Never in Jesus' name. And Lord, we stand as intercessors. And we say to Dave so. We command you to be sound and healthy. In the name of Jesus, you are not permitted to lose memories. Never in Jesus' name. We call forth the Lord's hidden ones to overthrow the enemies who desire to take the houses of the Lord into their own possession. Our God empowers the hidden ones to rise up and make his enemies like the stubble before the wind. Let the enemies of God be confounded and ashamed. That men may know that thou alone, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. O Lord, empower your hidden ones with supernatural wisdom to overtake the way of the world's wisdom. We call forth change into the monetary situations as your hidden ones are released into their anointings. Dave continually walks in the peace of God. Dave shall end up full of years and full of days. The nature of God comes forth in Dave as a reigning conqueror. It overtakes every dark part of the past and fills Dave with light. Dave follows the Spirit of God and he shall end full of days and full of reward at the Lord's return. Dave receives from the Lord peace and joy with no fear to the end of his days. Dave shall go home fat with reward and shouting the victory every moment. Dave is leading the charge into the revival of truth, soundness of mind and sanity. A revival so grounded and so sound that the finest minds will evaluate and say, your God must be God. Lord, we magnify and glorify you. We rejoice in your presence. For you alone are freedom. You alone are our answer. And we praise you, Lord. Let's do that for just a moment. Lord, we praise you and worship you. Lord, you said you wanted to be believed. You have found a people that believe you. We will hold fast to this confession. We will have everything that we say. We doubt not in our heart, but believe that those things which we say shall come to pass. And we have what we say in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father.